What's up guys, it's Third World Dave here, and today we're going to be talking about Amazon's Kindle Previewer software, how to download, how to install, and how to preview that brand new ebook of yours. So, the very first step is to actually download the software. Now the great news is it's the first result of Google. So if we search for Amazon Kindle Previewer, I think I spelled it wrong, but there it is. Okay, I'll insert this link at the bottom of the post as well. So we select that first link and we find the software that we're going to need. Now, before I install the software, I think I think it's important to tackle why you guys would want to install the software in the first place. I mean, why not just take the ebook and you know slap it straight onto Amazon? Now, I publish hundreds of ebooks every year, and one of the mistakes I see authors make is that they publish ebooks that they don't know are actually broken. So this could be for many different reasons, but essentially the ebook ends up on Amazon with major problems on the inside. Now this might be the lack of a table of contents, it might be a poorly formatted book, especially for those authors who have books that are not just, you know, plain text for example. So non-fiction books are especially at risk if you don't preview them first. Those are the books that are going to contain things like lists and graphs and bullet points. Guys, you really need to make sure that the book you put up looks good. Now that's why I use this software. I use it to make sure that the book that I've created looks good and that I'm proud to sell this book to readers. So make sure that if you're getting a third party to create your ebook for you, that you use this step to make sure that they've done a good job. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to download. So I have got Windows because I like to game. So I'm going to download this version. Okay, I'm going to save the file, I'm going to save it here, call it whatever you want, save the file. Now, this is quite a big file, so I know it's roughly 200 megabytes big. So, so guys with poor internet connections, just plan for this, it's a big piece of software. Um, it is very powerful, so that's maybe why it's big, but just so you know guys, it is going to be a quite a, a chunky and, and lengthy download. Okay, so I've got two minutes left here now. I've already downloaded the software in the background. So I'm going to cancel that. Okay. Now, here is the software that we just downloaded. Also, something you're going to need before you download the software, obviously, is going to be your ebook, guys, because the software previews an ebook. So maybe inside the same folder, for example, save the ebook that you actually want to preview. Um, great, next step, install the software. Okay, so I've just clicked it. I'm going to go OK. The very long and lengthy license agreement, which I completely agree to. Okay, you pick your installation path. I'm happy with that. Don't really mind. I'm going to go install. You can change it if you want, but there's no real reason to. It needs, wow, 500 megabytes. Okay, install. Okay. So while this is busy going through, as soon as it's done, we're going to open this ebook and we're going to go through the actual ebook that I've just received to make sure that we're happy with how it looks on the inside. Once again, there are many technical things I could point out, um, but I might lose quite a few of you. So let's keep it simple and say anything you see inside your ebook that just looks funny, um, that's a problem because you are essentially your ideal reader. Now, you might not be tech savvy, and that's fine, because visually you just need to make sure that the book looks good. So don't worry too much about, you know, you know the technicality of ebooks. I think anything that looks funny, you well within your rights to query with the people who made your ebook for you. Okay, so the software is done. Now, technically, you could search for it. You could search in your, your start menu. Now, I've got Windows 10. So I can search for Kindle Preview. There it is. Um, now, the one important thing here, guys, is to see that the ebook is recognized. In other words, it knows it needs to open with this application. This might not be the case for you. Just make sure that the opens with links to Kindle Preview. In other words, once you've installed the software, make sure that you come to your ebook properties and make sure that you enable the Mobi file to open with Kindle Previewer. Sounds complicated. A simpler way to do this would probably just be to open Kindle Previewer. Okay, so we've installed it. 
Okay, now this is a home screen. I'm going to go File, Open Book. Okay, so this is just a simpler way. It knows exactly where we are. It knows the ebook, and bang, I'm going to open it. And ladies and gentlemen, we've installed the software, and we have now opened the ebook. Great, right? This is exactly where I want you to be. So we're here at the start of the ebook. Now, the first thing you notice is this tab saying Fire HD, Fire HDX, and the Fire HDX 8.9. Guys, Kindle Preview simulates all the different Kindle devices. So what it means is you can thoroughly test this book and see that it looks good across all devices. I don't often go into detail. I'm not going to dig into every single device. For example, you can go into the older black and white devices. You can go into Kindle for the uh, you know, Apple devices if you wanted to. Um, so, for example, if we flick this, I think it's going to make it look a little bit different. Okay, so it's busy formatting for a different Kindle device, and likewise, the Fire HD, which is actually the device I've got here at home. Okay, so let's leave it on this one. Now, this button, for those of you who might read the book like this, um, on uh, the port, no, the landscape, the landscape. Now, I actually would love to know in the comment section, do you guys prefer reading your ebooks? Um, landscape, or you prefer reading it in the typical book shape of portrait. Um, I've had many arguments about this. Okay, there is an obvious font setting here as well, where you can change your font size, so we can make it a little bit smaller, we can make it a bit bigger. This is a power of an ebook, guys, so this is not unique to uh, the Kindle Preview, it just means that they're giving you the same power that the Kindle has. Okay, we can make the book look smaller, make the book look bigger. Now these buttons jump us to the table of contents, the HTML table of contents, and the NCX, technical table of contents. They should be here, your ebook should have a table of contents, um, NCX and HTML. Um, it's just easier for readers to use, so that's one of the things to check for. Okay, so we're inside the ebook now. All of your ebooks will obviously look different. As I mentioned, guys, this is very important, or more important, sorry, for nonfiction readers, because nonfiction books, or the, sorry, nonfiction authors, because nonfiction books typically look much more complex on the inside. So I'm literally just going through, um, let me maybe flip this to portrait, and go through and just make sure that I'm happy with how things look. Just make sure that the formatting makes sense. I'm not going to confuse someone. There's no um, code that's uh, not been, you know, um, ended off properly. So you're going to go through from beginning to end. Make sure the pictures are the right size. Make sure the spacing is as you want it. Don't worry about the font size because obviously, guys, the font size can change. Um, so I can see this author's chosen to have quite a complex interior of this ebook. Normally, wouldn't recommend having things like uh, borders around your pictures and things like that. It's fine. Um, regardless, so you go from beginning to end of this book. You can just scroll along here if you wanted to, and you make sure that you're happy with the ebook, guys. So that's it from beginning to end. We've and we've we've downloaded the software, we've installed it, we've checked our ebook, and now we can decide if we want updates. Um, one small thing, you guys, when you're giving feedback to the person who might have designed your book, try not to give page numbers. So don't say on page ten, please change. You know, this texture as mentioned to something else because ebooks don't have page numbers. So, when you are going to ask a person, you realize you made a mistake, you can see the mistake now that you can preview your book, try to give them rather a paragraph of text and say, okay, here's the paragraph. Um, please change the first two words as mentioned to previously mentioned, whatever the case might be. But just remember that page numbers um, are going to be useless because ebooks. Due to their ability to reflow and have you know bigger text or smaller text can't reflow. Great guys, that's our video for today. Let me know if you liked it, please. I love hearing back from you. This has been Third World Dave, and I'll love to speak to you guys again soon.